This may seem like an odd way to start, but when I bought the business first in 2004, somebody sent me a card, and I can't quite remember the cartoon, but the gist of it was, there was a group of men around a boardroom table and one woman, and the chairman was a man, and the caption said, that's an excellent point, Mrs. Brown. Now let's wait for one of the men to say it before we take it seriously. And I laughed, but not in a good way. But it struck me then, as it does now, that sometimes people are taken more seriously, not for who they are, but perhaps because they are not. So me, you look at me and you see a dragon, a businesswoman. I'm also a sister, I'm a daughter. Um, I'm a nurse, a journalist, a broadcaster, a presenter. I think I'm a good friend. But I'm also a widow and I'm a single mum. And my son doesn't have a father and we do okay. So I think because... I think if I was to tell you what I'm not, I'd have to continue by saying I'm not a member of the Labour Party. I'm not a member of any organisation. I'm not affiliated to any group. And that the views that I give you today are honest and heartfelt, and they are my own. And I think they're stronger because of it. I've no vested interests in standing here except one, and that's equality. I've spent almost all of my life fighting for equality. Equality for women, equality for people with mixed abilities, whether they be learning or, or, or physical. I, I sat here two weeks ago launching a, a wonderful charity celebrating its first anniversary on the autism spectrum, a wonderful young man called Adam Harris. So if it, anything that defines me, it is perhaps my belief that everybody's equal and that I think in our society, as much as I'd campaign for people from the black and ethnic minority community and more recently for people from the travelling community, I think that we need to embrace equality in a progressive society. When I was in my 20s, a young boy who's a distant relative, and you'll appreciate I won't tell you exactly how we're related, came to see me. He was 14. His name was Raymond, not his real name. And over the course of a couple of hours, heart-rending hours, he explained to me that he was gay, and that he always felt that he was gay. He'd never expressed that to his school friends, to his siblings, to his parents. And we discussed it. He felt that he couldn't, at this moment in his life, do that. He also had very depressed, he was very depressed, he had very suicidal thoughts. He became very close to me, and he's still very close to me. That young boy is now a grown man, and his family, and his siblings, and his friends still do not know that he's gay. When they visit the house, his partner moves out. All vestiges of his presence are removed. He doesn't invite his work colleagues to come home. I'm a big supporter of his career. I've urged him to go for promotion once or twice. He won't go for promotion for fear that it might expose his private life. He was a very talkative, animated young man. He stays silent. He is so afraid that he may speak and that he may um, in some way reveal his inner self when he's at work, that he remains silent and quiet. That young boy's life was devastated because he felt he couldn't come out. He couldn't talk openly about the fact that he was gay and it's still devastated. He never get, got to fulfill his potential. My young boy is 16 and I hope and pray that in his life he will fulfill his potential. Unlike Raymond, who has lived in, in, in a shadowland of his life. He's never been able to fulfill the potential that nature, nurture, his parents, his education gave him. This vote, I think, is about that young man, about all the girls and boys and men and women in our society who are still, sadly, and there's a lot of them, unable to speak openly about their sexual orientation. Their life choices are limited because of that, because society still discriminates, still marginalises them. And I think that by voting yes, I firmly believe it, that by recognising their right to marry, we as a society are acknowledging their place in our country as equal and valued citizens. And a yes vote will also have wider consequences for us as a country. In business, it's what I know best. Reputation is everything. Over the last few years, I've sat in News Talk and many other studios and I've read out international headlines that has not shone a good light on Ireland. I'm not going to reiterate the cases, you know them already. These incidences don't show us as the island we imagine we are. A yes vote would show the world that this tiny, tiny, once insular island had truly been transformed into a global nation that embraced diversity. Our history, what happened in our past, must not and should not define our future. I think all my hopes and dreams for Ireland in the future is bound up in us embracing equality for all. And this vote, well, it takes us one step closer but the ripple effect could be monumental. We go out into the world and we want people to buy from us, to invest in us, to visit us, to work here, to live amongst us. Ireland 
needs to welcome all, and that means embracing and cherishing all those who want to do business with us, regardless of their sexual orientation. This vote will affect a minority of the population. The reason why the majority gets to choose is precisely because it has wider consequences that are significant. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I hope, as I go around the country and meet people, that they will take the argument seriously, that they will read the wording of the referendum properly, that they won't be persuaded by things that cloud their judgment. Because at the end of the day, come referendum day, this is a private decision. All that's involved is pen, paper, and somebody's conscience. We have a few weeks to get that message out. Whenever I'm in business and I'm unsure about what decision to take, I weigh up the pros and cons. I try to list all the things that could happen if the decision was one way as opposed to the other. So what happens if we vote yes? Well, people of the same sex can get married. It's as simple as that. And we send a strong signal to the world that we're a progressive, inclusive society. It won't make other marriages any weaker. It won't make parents love their children any less. It won't bring a father back to my son. It's not going to change that either. But it will allow all our citizens to do something that I cherish and that was very important to me, and that is to marry somebody they love and live in a society that has taken a small but very important step towards acceptance of equal rights for all.